We're back here in the tackle room, and in this video, well, I'm about to make everyone mad at me. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. That is cloud debate, all that craziness that's going on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh, I got him. I felt bad. Come on, you. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing, and today's subject is probably the single most contentious topic there is in modern bass fishing. Whether you love it or whether you hate it, live scope or forward facing sonar is the biggest hot button topic that we have going right now. You've got people on either side of the fence who have dug in their heels and they say they love it, they say they hate it. It's great for fishing, it's a tool, it's here to stay, it's the worst thing ever, it's ruining fishing, we need to get rid of it, it's gotta be banned. You know, everybody has got their points. Well, I want to cut right through that. I want to be right down the middle and look at it from both sides. Um, what are the pluses, what are the minuses from a realistic and logical point of view? So you can more, better make up your mind, kind of cut through all the noise because we need to remove the tribalism from this, right? I mean, you have the for you and against you sort of mentality that we build up whenever it comes to these sorts of things. And that doesn't help anyone. So I'm trying to look at it from a logical and reasonable standpoint. So here is my point of view on it. And like I said, granted, I'm probably going to make people on both sides mad at me because I'm not in either camp. Although I can clearly see the points made by both sides. They've got some valid arguments and there's some, you know, that's just some cockamamie nonsense that's just being argumentative and being unreasonable. You know, it kind of reminds me, right? You've got these guys who are against live scope. They're against forward facing sonar and they are so livid at the very thought of it. And it kind of reminds me of when I was a kid and I came home with a brand new lure, right? Something like the banjo minnow. I remember that first time I saw the banjo minnow, you, you guys remember the old infomercials, right? You'd see it's a remarkable thing. They showed it in the tank and it was catching all these fish, even after, you know, all these other guys had their new lures in the tank and they didn't do anything. And the, at the end of the day, a guy comes in with a banjo minnow and he completely destroys them, right? And I remember showing that to my dad. I remember that I bought some, I ordered some, and I remember showing them to my dad and he got irate with me. You know, he told me, he says, well, what are they going to make next? A lure that goes out there and catches the fish for you? You know, as he said in his thick Mississippi accent, it was new. It was different. He didn't like it. Whether it worked or not was irrelevant. It was new. It was different. He didn't like it. And I see a lot of that. I see that similarity with people who are raging against forward-facing sonar. It's new. It's different. It's not something that they grew up with. It totally ruins the process, and therefore, it's bad. Then you've got guys on the other side of the fence who are saying things like, whether you like it or not, completely irrelevant, get used to it, get over it, it's here, it's a tool, it's not going anywhere. And both of these arguments just kind of butt heads with each other and they don't make any ground. Now I understand I'm not going to bring about world peace with this video. As a matter of fact, if anything, I may be pouring gasoline onto the fire, although that's not what I'm trying to do. What I am trying to do is I'm trying to, like I said, peel away the layers so we can look at this logically and reasonably. So let's start with why live scope is a good thing. Now, live scope can be a very good thing because, I mean, first and foremost, what does it do? It's basically like having a camera under the water, isn't it? You are looking down there and you are seeing the fish on your screen in real time. Now, with electronics, well, you are always scanning. You have this scan that you're doing, right? Your boat is over here at the very part of this picture. And then what you're seeing is essentially behind that. You're basically looking, you know, into the past. You're seeing 
what's behind the boat or whatever's underneath the transducer at that point. But live scope is different. Live scope is literally like pointing a camera at those fish and seeing what's going on. You can drop your lure in there and you can see what the fish are doing. So in that aspect, it makes locating those bass, it makes seeing what they're interested in, it makes it much, much easier. Anybody can catch fish now, right? I mean, that's sort of the selling point with it, is it's so easy to use and now those fish can't hide. That brings us to a negative about it. So for every positive, there's gotta be a negative. And the negative is, well, you know, it kind of diminishes the angler's ability. No longer are we relying on our skills as an angler, but a gimmicky device, right? We throw it out there and we just wait for the fish to bite. That doesn't take any skill at all. You know, so it kind of goes back to tournament angler. You know, uh, a lot of people hate the fact that they use forward facing sonar in tournament angling. And I can tell you what, it's not going anywhere. You can wait for MLF to ban it. You can wait for BASS to ban it. They're not going to. They will never ban it. Why? Because Garmin, Lawrence, Humminbird have got millions, tens of millions of dollars in invested into MLF and BASS to promote these products. They're not banning it, okay? Garmin, uh, Garmin, Humminbird, Lawrence are not going to allow that happen. So if you're holding your breath, waiting for them to ban it in a tournament situation, you know, you're gonna pass out because it's not gonna happen. Now, there may be some new tournament trails that come along that inspire that, you know, that they ban forward-facing sonar and that may actually, you know, pick up steam. Because a lot of people, myself included, I don't like watching a streaming event, say like MLF, you know, was just recently at the Potomac. And a lot of it was just a snore fest because these guys are steady looking at their screens, just motoring around with their face down, and then they hook set. That's boring. I don't want to watch that. And I know a lot of guys who don't want to watch all these scopers that are out there. To me, it's the thrill of the chase. It's the hunt. Now, the one preference I will say, if I, were, if I were to inject my own thought into this, and that is, well, I think it should be banned in tournament angling. I do not think there is a place for forward-facing sonar in tournament angling. I think it levels the playing field way too much. To me, it's like putting AI-assisted driving in NASCAR. You know, what would you need the driver for, right? I mean, that to me is the same level. We want the anglers to be the ones that are out there catching the fish, not their gear. That totally diminishes, you know, what's going on, but that's a rant for a different day. It is allowed in tournaments. That's the field that we have right now, so that's what we have to work with. Oh, there we go. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. He's not huge, but he's good. He's fun. He's a little bitty guy, I think. Feels like a little bitty guy. Oh, he's digging pretty good now. He's called me a little bitty guy, would you? Well, he's not bad. He's not bad. Woo! Stabbed myself with a finger. Nope, this is just black blue worm. Oh, he had a shad in his mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah, he had a little minnow in his mouth. That's funny, he coughed it up. That happens. Uh, and we're going to be going through some worms today, honey. Okay, so we have forward facing sonar. We've got it in tournaments. Maybe shouldn't be in tournaments, but that's where it's at. But what's another benefit of it? What is a real, solid, tangible, evidentiary benefit that we can say? Well, there's nothing like it for teaching bass patterns and behaviors. That is undeniable. Forward-facing sonar will teach you bass patterns and behaviors. And like my good buddy Hank over at Bass Geek just said recently, the one thing about LiveScope is it will instruct you very quickly on how many bass you aren't catching. Because there's bass everywhere. They are all up under you. And you're casting out there and you're not getting any bites but you put forward-facing sonar on there and you can see they're looking at it, they're swimming around it, you're just not getting any bites. It opens up that window. 
you are watching basically what those bass are doing. You're seeing their habitat and their reactions, and you're doing it in such a way, it is a window into their life that you've never had before. That is a definite plus. That itself will very much teach you about bass patterns, bass behaviors, and what's working at what time of year, given the depth, the situation, the color stain, whatever. You can see it, you can look at it, and you can see it. However, on the bad side is, well, then it's a crutch. It is a complete crutch, and you get guys now, you take the forward-facing sonar off their boat, they don't know what to do. They are blind. They have forgotten how to fish without it. And what it reminds me of is somebody who's been out in the sun all day, and then they go into a very dark room, and they've got other people that are already in that room, and their eyes are adjusted, and they can see just fine, and they can walk around. Well, the guy who just came in, well, he's stubbing his toe on the coffee table, and he's saying some nice, not nice words, whatever. Now, it takes a while for his eyes to adjust, but eventually they do, and he gets his bearings. For me, it's the same exact thing. You get live scope and you're using it as a crutch. It's doing most of the work for you. You've forgotten how to track down bass based on patterns, behaviors, time of year, weather, and all the things that you spent your entire life learning. That just goes out the window essentially with live scope and now it's a crutch. And when someone takes it away, well, you just don't know what to do with yourself anymore. Yeah, it looks pretty good too. That looks really good. There you go. There you go. Keep tension on it. I'm trying to have You're doing great. Whoa, there he goes. He's digging pretty good now. Ooh, let him play out. There you go. Ooh, that's not bad at all. Look at that. That's a nice fish. And you had him good. He swung your tail spinner off. Okay, well we won't go with tail spinner. Whoa! Because they, well, they bite without them. Mm-hmm, but they do like that. They do like that heavier fall. And lastly, ending on a positive note. Well, what does forward-facing sonar contribute to everyone? Whether you're against it, whether you are for it. Well, quite simply, there is a plethora of new techniques, of new baits, new soft plastic, new jig heads, new hard baits that are coming down the pipe as a direct result of forward-facing sonar, right? Jacob Wheeler and his new Demiki rig trick, that is all the rage right now. And it is things like that that are being developed, you know, new drop shot rigs, new swim bait heads, new soft plastics, you know, um, flukes, spunk sheds, lipless cranks, deep diving cranks, all of these things that forward facing sonar is helping us to evolve and develop. So whether you are a avid user and proponent of forward facing sonar, or whether you're dead sent against it, you still stand to benefit from all of this activity and all of this research that is being done. That's undeniable. Now, in the end, does that make it worth it? Well, that's for every angler to decide for themselves. I can't say that. I don't think anybody can say that. Only you know whether that's a benefit for you and in the end, whether it's a total benefit or if you're still just going to be against it. And either way, like I said, this is not to condemn. This is not to judge. That's just how it is. Some people like it. Some people don't. And there are valid arguments on both sides. Me, I try to be right down the middle. I try to look at it from both angles, use logic and reason, and I just try to make up my mind on my own. So there you have it. Based on the facts, based on logic and reason, the conclusion that we can draw is, well, there's a lot of good with forward-facing sonar, and there's a lot of bad. As with many things in this world, there is no clear-cut black and white answer. For myself, well, as I've said, I fully intend on embracing it on my boat, but I'm also opposed to it in a tournament situation. I feel a lot of anglers let emotion get in their way and, and clouds their judgment just for the fact that they don't like it and they want you to not like it too because, you know, different is scary and we want people to be like we are. That's what tribalism is all about. 
So let's cut through that. Let's understand that there is more than one side of the argument and that other people can do their thing and it doesn't have any impact on us, what we do whatsoever. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.